Yeah, can you just email me, please? Yeah, yeah, sure. I'll email you the details. No, regarding that material creation, I have uh, sent you mail yesterday with screenshot. Yeah, so table C U R M and T zero zero and W inconsistent. Yeah. So just wanted to know, you know, before we go ahead with system thing, you know. Are you all using the same system? Because yeah. you know there is a lot of confusion uh, regarding the system because yeah, all yeah. using this IDS system. Yes. Because somebody gave me an uh, issue with HP seven, so I hope that is no. We are using IDS eight hundred client. Prashant, you are also using IDS, right? Everyone is using IDS and GDS, yeah? Oh, yes, I guess. Uh, we, uh, we all have same system. Okay. I'll remove this HP7. Yeah, uh, Ron, uh, this is Shreyas here. I think that HP7 is from uh, my side and I'm using that 902. Because I got the idea of that system only. It's okay. Uh, that, that is, you know, again, because I think for you, sifting and everything is working. No, no, same RF station. Same issue. Yeah. All of you to use the same system, you know, because I have to sort it in two systems. I get a lot of data in this. Sorry, no, I didn't get it. I mean, have you created a lot of data in, in this? HP seven. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Entire of structure, I mean, uh, till same. Okay. Uh, uh, HP seven. Okay. Uh, the same I mean, uh, issue. if I get an idea of uh, you know uh, eight hundred client uh, with idea system ID, uh, mm -hmm. I can create the entire structure again. But uh, I need to get in touch with Vishwanath for ID. Anyways, don't worry. You know, we'll try to sort it out of the systems. But I hope EWM is same for all of you, TMS. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, sorry, GTS. Yeah, yeah GTS. Okay. All right. And so I'm just waiting for, you know, the EWM details from you guys. So please send me over so that I can check which one is working and accordingly I can make a change. Uh, and also I noticed, uh, yeah. No, no, I think uh, in one of my email I have sent you the details of my EC, uh, ECC system. If you want, I can no, send I'm it to you. EWM. I'm looking for EWM. Uh, okay, I'll send it. GTS. GTS. Then, um, I'll look into that matter master issue. Um, why are you getting that issue? Tabris, have you copied the plan correctly? From 1000? Yeah, I have copy and the like it is uh, uh, like refracted into SPRO2. Uh, I checked that uh, tables too for the plant and it's working fine. But when I am going to create a material, it's uh, showing me that error. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think I have a screenshot. I'll try. Okay, sure. Thank you. Okay, just an update, everyone. You know. Um, I will also send an email. So, you know, I have been approached and you know, um, about the Diwali vacation. So, I mean, I will, uh, you know, just uh, did an offline check. Many of you are on leave on 31st and 1st because of Diwali. So, we will also have uh, First, initially we decided only 31st will be off. Call off on first as well because most of you are not going. So I'll send a mail across for confirmation to all of you and Vishwanath and Santosh of it's off everyone after the after the mail. So just for an update, you know, 31st and first we'll have a vacation so uh, for Diwali, okay, and we'll join back on. Then, second, uh, okay. let's now 
to start with our uh, session. So we have seen packing specs and yesterday we created a pack spec. We'll test pack specs and we will uh, we'll just run off our product. We are going to maintain it for more products uh, as per our uh, um, part of the part of the parts we have taken and we are going to use them in our further sessions. Okay. So um, We'll, we'll on and off we'll come back to each of these master data product achievement packing specs okay then next uh, topic which I want to take the next uh, two master data and master data there are remaining two elements which we want to discuss okay remaining two master data I mean we'll not be going in more detail but just I'll give you a background of what these master data are so one is used from the outbound side, from the sales side, that is transportation routes. So I hope you might have heard this term in ECC delivery as well. Okay. It's basically, you know, it, it, it defines the path taken by, you know, your outbound shipment to reach a customer or a plan. Okay. So uh, which your shipment takes to Hi, Vatan. Yeah, hi, Ron. Your voice is breaking. It's breaking. Yeah. Same for me. The end of your words is breaking. Like. Hello, is it better now? No, no, it's still the same. It is uh, breaking. It just give me rejoin then maybe some uh, connectivity connection looks okay. Uh, from the last couple of days uh, we are facing the same issue with breaking voice. The end of words you are. Oh, okay. Just give me a minute.
Hello. Hello. Audible now? Yes, sir. Okay. Just let me know, you know, uh, if you still face any issue. Okay. So I was discussing about the master data. So just a brief mention about two more master data, which probably will not be able to test now because we haven't gone into those areas. Like I was mentioning about routes. You know, you might have heard about routes in your uh, outbound delivery in ECC. And the same route also available in EWM. So nothing but it determines your, you know, how your, uh, you know, shipment is going to move across in the supply chain taking which path it is taking to reach to it. Okay. So this route is again important for the purpose of you know clubbing outbound deliveries together. So if they are following the same route, so you can group them together for the shipment. Okay. So apart from these you know basic the other advantage of route is that the shipment date, the good issue date, okay, so accordingly, you know, the, the planning can be done, okay, so we know when it has to be shipped and accordingly when it will, it has to be good issued. Transportation route, you know, uh, does some calculation on the dates to give you a, the good issue should happen, so based on good issue, the warehouse dates are being calculated, you know, when the picking has to be started, when the wave has to be released, and all those things. So, um, you know, based on the, um, you know, your route planning, we ship for the purpose of, you know, grouping of delivery. Other dates are, you know, calculated. Okay. So, routes, we will see them, you know, getting populated in the delivery and, you know, being used for you know, grouping of deliveries and other activities. So that's what that was from outbound master data for production with production. Okay, so interface with production, you know, means you supply parts to your production assembly or uh, manufacturing wherever you are, you know, producing your goods. Let's say in our case, we are we are going to make a pump. Okay, and this pump is going to manufacture and you know, it, has to, it will be assembled and we are going to give parts to the line where it will be assembled. So that process will need a, a master data called as production supply area. The production supply area just to uh, heads up you know and understand. So this is a production line place where the pumps are assembled. So let's say you know your pump it will be you know first going at this workstation some parts fitted here, there is a workstation, it will move across to next workstation. So let's say here the um, uh, the shaft assigned to a slug, okay, and it, it is put in a, in a sleeve, then here, you know, the bolting is kept, the shaft is kept, and here the electronic drive is fitted on the shaft, okay. So it goes on and you know there are a person who does their activity and they pass on the pump or the pump get passed to you know conveyor segment to the next workstation. Correct? So each of these areas, you know, where they are doing so in this area we need to supply shaft, correct? In this area we need to supply slug, correct? Because you are the suck member. In this area we need to supply the or the electronic drive, okay. So these areas where you are going to supply your parts, so that you know this area is in, in the production area, and you supply these parts for production, okay. So this is, this areas are called as this whole area is called as the production supply area, and in this production supply area, you know you can have different production 
is let's say this is one area where you're going to do the assembly there is another production supply area where you are doing going to do some other activities like uh, you know uh, fitting those things here yeah. here major there you are just going to check the alignment and fixing some bolts attaching some labels or you know em embossing some uh, barcodes on the product okay so you can have different different supply areas so there is no fixed way to say that how many supply areas they are going to they are going to have so basically it depends on the business you know how they map their warehouse uh, production line generally this is a master data in ecc maintained by pp okay so they will create psas production supply areas we have to replicate that psa from ecc into ewm so once we have this psa is in ewm so we know that the production line is divided into how many small parts you know or the entire production line is just one area production supply area okay so this is one entire area let's say this entire production line is one area so this is bin 1 bin 2 bin 3 so what we have to do in system is say for product x which is so so for product shaft you know it is in bin x okay bin x is the production bin we call it as a production bin so always shaft have to be supplied here bin y so plugs have to be supplied here okay bin z for your electronic drive okay so always your parts will be supplied here down below minimum level or somebody raises a request there are different ways the production line you know they raise a request either it's a con bar you know they go and uh, uh, they here which you know how much stock it is or they maintain minimum maximum level okay ways the production here the assembly guys will tell that the stock has been reduced so just please so we are going to talk about this more how we can you know pull the PSA CWM in our production integration topic but yeah just to give you a background about what P it's a master data uh, we we simply created an ECC and we replicated it to EWM. Uh, moving the PA, we don't use the processing. There is a separate transaction moving the PSs. Okay. Then in the EWM side, we do additional config where we map the and to a bin. Okay, for a particular product, as we just said, that shaft bin is X in PS. Okay, in the entire PSA. Okay, so that is production supply area, and I think that is the data which I wanted to discuss with you. I have one more master data, sorry, that is resources. Okay. So I mean, resources is uh, basically you know, uh, it is basically a person. Okay who performs the work in the warehouse okay so this is here source is a person and a forklift okay so the resource is a person on a forklift so they are doing the activity here sometimes it is only the person who performs work taking the box in his hand and taking it from one place to another okay sometimes as i told you you know the conveyor segments so you know, have conveyor segments where you know the product automatically moves from one bin to another from one place to another okay as I said you know in production they keep it here you put a shaft they keep the shaft here so automatically conveyor takes them to the next point of fit okay so depending on your you know arrows and how things are you have a lot of uh, other uh, resources like automated guided vehicle okay so what is automated guided 
vehicle or automatic guided equipment it basically it's a it's let's say you can imagine that everything is done automatically so for example uh, a storage system a racking system you, you saw me you know giving you some racking system you know details or, or video right so in that racking system now what we have done is you know in that racking system we are person in forklift is taking the pallets and putting it in the racking system right but there are you know certain racking systems which are automatic okay it's sorry uh, let's say this is a racking system okay so what you do is you know there will be a plate kept here you know and uh, so I'm just giving you a very rough example. We can see some more video automated guided equipment. So you keep your vehicle here part on this. So this automated guided will automatically search which bin is empty. Okay. And he will, it will go and keep the stock in that particular bin. Okay. You don't have to do anything. It's fully robotic, fully automated. So there can be cranes also which can be automated. So this guided vehicles means you don't have to feed them anything you, or the, you know there are certain storage types where you know you just keep the stock you know this is your storage type you just keep the stock you know it has a lot of racking inside just keep the stock at the storage type so automatically you know in and stored in an appropriate appropriate bin and for removal also they will automatically remove and keep it here so let's say this is the removal area so automatically you give a request so the parts are automatically picked from by robotics and they are you know uh, or by automation we call them and they keep it here for you to take it out and you know you you keep the product here you give a as soon as you give the product here a signal goes to them you know that the part for put away and they automatically determine bin and uh, the task execution is done by you know the automated equipment okay so I'm just giving you an example of different kinds of you know resources anything who is working on the task who is executing some work is a resource okay so uh, a resource why it is important in EWM because because when you work with resource you basically uh, you know track order was executed or you know we have tasks so which task is executed by which resource okay so you can also work you know, as per capacity which resource has what capacity okay you can also work with um, you know resource to say that this resource can only work in inbound okay this resource can only work in outbound area okay so work allocation can also be done by using resource okay the capacity so may if you create a resource so just creating resources of no use you know you have to uh, take some more features you know you can take more features out of the resource let's say the capacity, how much weight, volume, what kind of pallets he can handle. Capacity also you can maintain there. Okay, so just to make a solution foolproof, you know, you will make sure that, uh, you know, uh, let's say for example in a racking, okay, in a racking where the forklift cannot go uh, uh, different different sizes, five ton, eight ton, ten tons. Racking the space is small, forklift can go. So you can create a resource and say that this resource is only allowed to enter, you know, uh, uh, five and forklift is only allowed to enter. So when you try to execute the task using a eight turn forklift, it will do it. Okay. You know, in a in a regular system, you know, all your work, RF work task system is going to propose you the system will never propose you execution where it is not as per your capacity okay 
So that capacity uh, can be handled and then application of the resource, what he can do. As I said, you know, you can differentiate resource from working from one area to another. So we say that this resource is only working. So we have six storage types, right? So we can say that, you know, resource, this uh, uh, forklift can only work in storage type 8001 and 8000. This kind of resource is not allowed. 8004 and 8005. Okay, so that kind of also you can give. You can give what kind of pallets this resource can. Handle. So, by hand we cannot give pallet to handle, which you know this guy is handling himself. We cannot give him a euro, you know, because a euro having eight pumps, six sorry, four pumps on it. So you can imagine the weight how much it will be so I will that so let's say four pumps is around um, eight tons let's say for example so we'll take a we'll assign it to of eight or so you know pallet wise also we can control which kind of equipment can be used and which kind of risk can be used and which cannot be used okay so this resource, um, you know, it's uh, it's new in AWM and uh, one feature where you know we control, okay, how the uh, um, work is allocated. Okay, so now what we are in now is with this resource, okay, mm -hmm. is to start using the for execution okay I will just guide you how you can use RF so let's say for example this is an RF UI okay so so this is a transaction RF where you can see this transaction is for another warehouse. So okay, this is the RF where this is the small screen which user sees on its RF gun. Okay, I hope uh, you know RF gun small handle device okay, which they use for scan purpose. Okay, in case you can just give me a minute, I'll just Google it for you. So, you know, in typical industries, you know, they don't carry desktop, right? So there is no space to keep a desktop and all the people are moving across there. So they don't, they don't do the SAP transactions on the desktop. They do it on this RF guns. You can see this is a very typical RF gun in most of the companies, okay? Here, in, you see this transactions, SAP transactions are what you know they can do on their screens these transactions are you know sh shown on their screen and, and they will just select let's say O1 system guided selection so it gives them a task and they will execute a task let's say they here the task is to pick 10 piece one piece from GR zone and put that one piece into this storage type. So this guy is executing a task. Okay. So the transaction I'm using is RFUI. So you can enter the first screen. You will see that you know it, the resources required okay 
So this is the resource, it's a master data. So any task or any the gun you have to first tell which resource you are either you are a forklift or, or, or you are you are using uh, yourself to the task or you are going to use some other equipment to do the task. Okay. So this RF guns, you know these are RF guns which you can uh, typically then this RF guns at this at the you know at this front portion, this is the front portion, they will have this scanners, yeah. So you might have seen, you know, retail shop in India mostly, you know, uh, in Big Bazaar or DMART or, you know, all those places, they have this scanners and they scan the barcode. This is exactly the same functionality we use in industry. So you have kept in a box and they have these labels, they have barcodes. So you scan the barcode, see, Imagine that if in any transaction, let's say this is a RF transaction, so this is the bin. So you can imagine it difficult it will be for this guy to type a bin on the small keypad. So what they do is the bin, the bin where the product is stored will have a barcode like. Okay, so he will not going to he's not going to type here. He's going to scan. Okay, same way product is going to scan the barcode. Okay, and quantity, if the quantity is there, we will scan the quantity, we will also have a quantity barcode on the label. And then, or, you know, there is a button here in his hand, you can press, let's say here, the small button. If he presses that, that is kind of an enter. Okay, so this is how maximum warehouse transactions are carried out. So. There are a lot of, you know, uh, we can do a lot of uh, work on this RF transactions also, you know. Let's say, you know, in your implementation, you are asked to create a new transaction here or change the screen or, you know, do some more elements here. So, I will be sharing some technical books with you so that, you know, how this can, this these all changes can be done. You can have a look at it. Okay. So, our main aim is to resource so that we can do some RF analysis. Okay. So the first thing before you create a resource, before you RF, you have a user. Okay. So what we need to do is See, this is a user which is already there, it's in my name and it is using warehouse W1. I'm going to copy it and I'm going to say warehouse WH80 resource I find because I don't know, I haven't created any resource now. Oh, okay. Uh, I mean, why it is not allowing me because one resource be active in only one warehouse, not in two warehouse. Okay, so trainer we work in one warehouse at one time. It, it's pretty cool because where he is working, same user is working for one warehouse. So first thing is that you know you are able to do those actions. So now if you if you I, okay, you can enter your resource and start using RF. So there are things like, um, I'll just explain you what are these uh, device, okay, and what you did profile, okay. What I do is, I'll let you, first let us go to our resource, okay. So, so for resource, Master data, we will see resource management, we will see resource. So let us keep our warehouse, you will see there are no resources here. So I will have to create a resource here, okay. So uh, we go into creation of resource, I uh, will just tell you about one important point a task.
we have these two deliveries. So what we have done so far for bond deliveries, we have just done good receipt, okay? And we haven't done, we have just done good receipt and done put away for one, okay? You can just imagine our last video that I showed you, you know, you so as soon as we did good receipt, stock came into that intermediate storage area, which is the GR zone. From there, it has the racking. So for placing the stock from GR zone to the racking, okay, of a pallet to be placed from that intermediate to the racking, we need a task, right? Any movement, a task. So here, I'm creating the in a regular this task can be. Okay. Most of the time it is automatic. So we'll see those uh, possibilities during our inbound. Okay. So what I'm doing is I'm saying keep place the stock. From, so I'm creating a task. Okay, I just wanted to show you the structure of a task. I will create the save. So task is created. So Okay, so a task is created. The system task. Now this task has to be executed. So there at the bottom screen shows the task. You can see the task number and the screen shows order. Okay, so system has created ten tasks because I think there are. 10 handling units in this. Each handling unit system has created one task. And if you select this form view, you will see the product is moving from GR zone into the racking. Okay, and this is the handling being moved. This is the import delivery for which the stock is being moved. Okay, so basically we have task created. And you can see there is one more thing which is called as warehouse order. Okay. Whenever you execute task in EWM, you, it is assigned to an order. Okay. What warehouse order is? It's nothing but grouping of tasks. Okay. So what it does? So there are tasks. All ten of them are grouped together. So a warehouse order is a group, nothing but a grouping of tasks. So a person who is, so you can see a resource here. So what of task, which is a warehouse order. Your okay. voice is broken. Thank for everyone. Has it start? Yeah, it's uh, what you call uh, it's completely breaking. It's like looking from like internet, uh, not from that go to meeting. It's been shown fine. I just tested. Um, okay, let me try to change.
Hello. Hmm. Hi, can you hear me now? Just change a different internet now. Is it better? Yeah, no. Hmm. Let me how to share my screen. Let me ask Vishwanath to share me in Give me a minute. Okay, can you all see my screen now? You are on. Okay, so I was talking about the resources and RF. Okay, so I was showing you a typical warehouse um, order. So a warehouse task is grouped together into warehouse order. Okay. So basically, you know, we have this warehouse order and
And just finish up this warehouse order. I think action is bad today, so much in the day. I'll try to sort it out, but I'll just try to conclude before we leave on the warehouse order. So I was showing you this uh, delivery for which you have created a warehouse task. Okay. So what we are going to do tomorrow, you know, is we are going to execute this warehouse order on a gun task. If you click here, additional data, you will see the warehouse order. So warehouse order is very important for RF because a person task on RF he's going to use this he's going to use this order for confirmation okay so if we go on to RF again you know for other warehouse where it is set up okay. selection selection order. So by using warehouse order also, you know, you can go and confirm your task. So you select, if I warehouse order, all this task will be selected for execution. Okay. So warehouse order is assigned to a resource, resource which will come here. Then you have a queue. Okay. Queue means queue is inbound. Okay. So queue means it's basically particular you know for a particular uh, source and destination now it is going to GR zone to 8 to 5 okay so what we what all inbound whatever task are created then inbound I have assigned it a key inbound all the tasks which are in the queue of our bond all the tasks, I mean this from a warehouse which we can also set up our own. So we are going to see tomorrow, you know, how these queues are determined. Queues are very important because a person who is using an RF, he can also select a warehouse order based on queue. Okay? So system selection by queue, he can enter inbound queue. So all the tasks which are inbound, he will see on its screen. Okay, so queue is important. If the queue is not there, you cannot confirm the task on RF. Okay, so it's a mandatory. The configuration for queue is based on, you know, certain uh, delivery entries. Okay, so to have a look at the configuration, where the configuration is done for a queue. And see that in the resource management. Okay. So what we are going to do is, you know, we are just going to create some queues in the process. We can see cross process for resource management. Define queues. So here you can define, we can give a criteria for your queues. So say for our warehouse, the AT. Since we have copied, you know, we see so many criteria coming up. Okay, but you know, I'll delete the unwanted ones because these storage types we are not using them. So, just to give you a heads up, you know, what are the different parameters based on which we can 
get a queue coming up in the order, your activity area, your source activity area, okay? So source activity is 010, okay? Or it is based on process, oh sorry, where I am, I should be in WHAT. So the area or it can process type or it can be based on pro warehouse process type is like your movement have in W we have an MM. Okay. So every delivery or every task process type. So it's like your move. So process type zero one zero. So same process type in your warehouse task also. Here it is warehouse process type. So based on process type, based on the source storage type or destination source storage type activity area or destination storage type activity area, based on what are performing. For combination of all these, you know we can get the queues determined. Okay. So I'll delete the unwanted queues which are for which for the storage type. You can see the storage type if you are not using them. So I'll delete the unwanted ones for our warehouse. Okay. So I'm going to almost deleted all of them. So for our warehouse we have this to this. I'll remove some more unwanted ones. GHCT we are not using and we'll remove this. Okay? So we have one, two, three, four for us. Okay? So what we are saying is whenever the process type is one zero one zero it is inbound or whenever you are picking from nine zero one it is ACT inbound. Okay? So whenever you are using process type nine 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 it is in internal and it's for internal warehouse activities. Whenever your destination is 9020, sorry, this is source activity that is a destination. So, whenever you are taking stock, any uh, group first, the queue should be outbound. So, this queue determination criteria that you, you know, it comes warehouse order. And this is important for executing your task. Okay? So Q, you can see there are different different parameters. You know, you can see it is based on process type also. It is based on storage type also. Something called as Q access sequence, where we say in which sequence. Okay. So what we are saying is first Q mentioned for a process activity area, destination activity area, bin process type activity. If not, then as per process type. If not, then search as per source area, only where only source area is kept. If you see the criteria, you know, here, it might create conflict, isn't it? Because let's say here, picking from 9010 is ACT inbound, but we are saying entry which has process type should be above, we are given it second priority. So system first check if there is any entry for all these five parameters. If not, then it second option where only type was entered. So it took this. It did this. So here, you know, I've just kept three very basic ones: inbound, internal, outbound. Whenever we do a lot of scenario and mention the queues here, so you may, might be seeing me, you know, coming up because I want the queues to come automatically if I want I can also manually go and change the queue here you can change it to anything ideally in a regular business the queues are coming up from your configuration okay so queue is very important setting of resources okay so we create queues and then tomorrow we'll go and maintain the resource okay so in resource, we are going to create, we are going to assign and what resource type, resource group are and how we create. 
So we will create a resource warehouse and we will test the RF execution for that particular resource tomorrow. Then going forward in maybe in time we will understand some technical about RF you know I will share some to you as I said. So what is your presentation device, what is personalized profile, how do you, you technically look into what are the uh, technically look into the screens, how you can look into and how you can give in on working on a particular RF. So all this I'll be explaining you along with this resource master data. Okay. I'm going to create resource. Understand more about RF. Okay. How the configuration and how the setup is done. So we'll stop here today. Um, I'll try to fix internet issue. Hopefully it will be working well tomorrow. So I have few open questions with me which I have to answer. I look into that. Please send me your uh, EWM details positively today. Okay. So I'll stop it. We'll catch up again tomorrow. Sure. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. <laughs>